Hello, hello. I'm sorry to be late. Hello, how are you? How are you today? Mirna, Larissa. Hello, teacher. Hello, teacher. Abby. <laughs> hello, teacher. Well, Fredo, Mauricio, Kenneth, welcome, welcome to the class. I'm sorry to be late, sure. right? But I was in the other class. Estaba con otra clase, entonces no arro ahí la tarde con el examen, ¿ok? Good. So, no problem. We're going to start right now. Let me close this and this, right? Mm -hmm. Let me see. Okay, tonight we're going to fix the test. The midterm, we're going to answer, I'm sorry, we're going to answer the test of the uh, sections one, two, and three, right? Sections one, two, and three. Okay, now let's go to the test immediately, right? Okay, the test has five sections, A, B, C, D, and E. In the platform it says E, E, right? But you know the correct one is A, B, C, D, E, right? Okay, and we're going to start with listening, right? Here we go. Okay, listening. You are going to listen to two audios, two audio, right? Audio number one is about Sylvie, Michael, and Lucy. Sylvie, Michael, and Lucy, they are students and they are talking. They are talking. What are they talking? Okay, we're going to listen and answer number one. For example, Sylvie is, who is Sylvie? Is Lucy's friend, right? Amiga de Lucy. Sylvie is from Toronto. Or Sylvie is Michael's classmate. Hmm? What is the correct answer? Now, Sylvie's last name, el apellido de Sylvie is Marceau, Marceau, or Marcoe. I don't know, you're going to listen, right? And Lucy's math teacher is really great, very interesting, or really good. And finally, they are all in the cafeteria, in the same school, in the same chemistry class. ¿En ¿Dónde están? ¿Dónde están llevando a cabo la plática? ¿En la cafetería? ¿En, el, en la escuela? ¿O en la clase de química, right? So, Let's listen, please. Okay. Pay attention, please. Lucy, Michael, and Sylvie are talking. Listen and check the correct answers. Good morning, Michael. Hi, Lucy. How's it going? Pretty good, thanks. How about you? Great. Hey, who's your friend? This is Sylvie Marceau. She's from Canada. Hi, Sylvie. Nice to meet you. I'm Michael Morse. Hi, Michael. It's good to meet you, too. I'm sorry, Sylvie, but what's your last name again? Oh, it's Marceau. How do you spell that? M-A-R-C-E-A-U. I see. So you're from Canada. Are you from Toronto? No, I'm from Montreal. Where are you from, Michael? I'm from Chicago. You know, Sylvie and I are in the same chemistry class this semester. Oh, really? Yeah. And what do you do, Michael? Are you a student here too? Yes, I am. Lucy and I are in the same math class. Oh. Is your class interesting? Yes, it is. It's very interesting. And the teacher is really good. By the way, he's from Canada too. <laughs> really? 
Listen, I'm on my way to the cafeteria now. Are you free? Sure. Let's go and get some coffee. Okay, Sylvie? Sounds great. Okay. Second time. Lucy, Michael, and Sylvie are talking. Listen and check the correct answers. Good morning, Michael. Hi, Lucy. How's it going? Pretty good, thanks. How about you? Great. Hey, who's your friend? This is Sylvie Marceau. She's from Canada. Hi, Sylvie. Nice to meet you. I'm Michael Morse. Hi, Michael. It's good to meet you, too. I'm sorry, Sylvie, but what's your last name again? Oh, it's Marceau. How do you spell that? M-A-R-C-E-A-U. I see. So you're from Canada. Are you from Toronto? No, I'm from Montreal. Where are you from, Michael? I'm from Chicago. You know, Sylvie and I are in the same chemistry class this semester. Oh, really? Yeah. And what do you do, Michael? Are you a student here too? Yes, I am. Lucy and I are in the same math class. Oh, is your class interesting? Yes, it is. It's very interesting. And the teacher is really good. By the way, he's from Canada too. <laughs> really? Listen, I'm on my way to the cafeteria now. Are you free? Sure. Let's go and get some coffee. Okay, Sylvie? Sounds great. Okay. Do you have any question about the listening? The questions are clear, right? Again, right? Sylvie is... ¿Quién es Sylvie, right? Sylvie's last name. El apellido de, de Sylvie. Uh, Lucy's math teacher is... ¿Cómo es el profesor de, de matemática de Lucy, right? And, and ¿dónde están? They are all in Sylvie, Michael, and, and Lucy. Where are they, right? Okay. Any part of the listening that you say, teacher, I don't understand what he says. No, no entiendo qué dice esa parte. Uh-huh. Do you have questions? About the listening? No? No, okay. teacher, thank you. Okay, now. So, can I continue with the second listening? Yes? Okay, here we go. Let me see, oopsie. I want to close it. Give me a second here. Number two, okay, good. Now, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Now, part two. Listen to the conversation and select the correct answer. Ben prefers, so we're talking about a uh, here, in this listening, we're going to talk about clothes, right? Ropa. Size, price, color, right? So, clothes, ropa. And prices, a material, material too, right? Polyester, silk, cotton. Size, about the clothes, right? So, you're going to answer. Number one, Ben prefers. What does Ben prefer? The green shirts, the red shirts, or the blue shirts. ¿Cuáles son las camisas que prefiere Ben, right? The blue shirts are, las camisas azules cuestan $25, $29, or $41. The price, right? And number three, the green shirts are made of, ¿de qué están hechas las camisas verdes, right? Polyester, silk, seda, right? Cotton, algodón. So what is the correct? Polyester, silk, or cotton? Band size. ¿Qué tipo de camisa usa band? Large, medium, or small? Hmm? Large, medium, and small, right? Now here we go. Listen. Anne and Ben are talking in a clothing store. Listen and check the correct answers. Hey, those shirts look nice. What do you think, Ben? Yeah, Anne, they do look nice. I really like the blue ones, and the green ones are nice too. Which ones do you prefer? I think I like the green ones better. 
They're very stylish. Oh, but look at the price. Forty-one dollars. That's expensive. The blue ones are only twenty-nine dollars. That's more reasonable. But they're polyester. The green ones are made of better material. They're cotton. Say, Ben, what size are you? Small or medium? I wear a medium. But there aren't any medium ones in blue. They're all large or small. Okay. Anne and Ben are talking in a clothing store. Listen and check the correct answers. Hey, those shirts look nice. What do you think, Ben? Yeah, Anne, they do look nice. I really like the blue ones, and the green ones are nice too. Which ones do you prefer? I think I like the green ones better. They're very stylish. Oh, but look at the price. Forty-one dollars. That's expensive. The blue ones are only twenty-nine dollars. That's more reasonable. But they're polyester. The green ones are made of better material. They're cotton. Say, Ben, what size are you? Small or medium? I wear a medium. But there aren't any medium ones in blue. They're all large or small. The last time, please. The last time, please. Now, pay attention. Anne and Ben are talking in a clothing store. Listen and check the correct answers. Hey, those shirts look nice. What do you think, Ben? Yeah, Anne, they do look nice. I really like the blue ones, and the green ones are nice too. Which ones do you prefer? I think I like the green ones better. They're very stylish. Oh, but look at the price. Forty-one dollars. That's expensive. The blue ones are only twenty-nine dollars. That's more reasonable. But they're polyester. The green ones are made of better material. They're cotton. Say, Ben, what size are you? Small or medium? I wear a medium. But there aren't any medium ones in blue. They're all large or small. Okay, class. Any question? They talk about many prices. They talk about many sizes. They talk about many, um, you no know, prices. I said right. So, but listen to the question. Ben prefers what? Ben, the green, the red, or the blue? Uh, the green. The green shirts. <laughs> no. Sorry. Sorry. Yes, it's a secret. Remember, it's, it's individual, right? Okay. And the blue shirts, the blue shirts, listen, not the green, not the, the blue shirts, 25, 29, or 41, right? Don't, don't say. And the material, the material of the green shirts, the green shirts, not the blue, the green, polyester, silk, or cotton. And the size of them is large, medium, or small, right? Good. Any question? No, okay, easy, right? Me imagino que la mayoría lo terminó, ¿verdad? Yes? <laughs> okay, let's continue. Letter B, right? Fill in the blanks with the correct form of the verb to be. The correct form of the verb to be, right? So for this part, I'm going to explain something. I'm going to explain the verb to be in affirmative, negative, and question, right? Now, affirmative. I am a student. You are a doctor. He is an athlete. She is a nurse. It is my dog.
We are in El Salvador. And they are in San Miguel. San Miguel, right? So these are the affirmative sentences, right? I am, you are, he, she is, it is, we are, and they are. But if I want to make it negative, I just say not, right? I am not a student. You are not a doctor. He is not an athlete. She is not a nurse. It is not my dog. We are not in El Salvador. They are not in San Miguel, right? You can also use contractions. Here, for example, you can say, I'm not a student. Or you can say, you aren't a doctor, right? Contraction, look. Or, you're not a doctor, right? Two options. Here again, the same, right? Contraction. He isn't an athlete. Or, He's not an athlete, etc., etc. You can use contractions, no contractions. You can make contraction with the subject. You can make contraction with the verb to be, etc., etc. Right? Now, in questions. Yes. No. Question. In yes, no question. We only move the subject and the verb to be in this way, right? Again, for example, when I say, you are a doctor, you are a doctor. So instead of saying in the question, you are, you say, are you? Are you a doctor? Let's say the question here, right? Am I? A student, and at the end we use the question mark, right? Am I a student? Are you a doctor? Is he an athlete? Is she a nurse? Is it my dog? Is it my dog? And then you answer yes or no, right? Are we in El Salvador? Instead of say they are, we say are they in San Miguel, in San Michael? Okay. And then you can answer or yes or no. Am I a student? Teacher. Teacher. Yes, question, please. Um, um, in, the, in, the, in the last uh, question, you are they in San Miguel, or you can say San Miguel in Spanish, or are they in San Michael? No, I say it, it has no right. It don't cheat. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. No, but I, 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 I have a question. 
Yes, no, you, no. The names. You, you, you name. always uh, say San Miguel. Yes. Always, always, yes. Ah, okay. Los nombres no okay. se okay. producen, right? Uh, okay. Yes, I know. But I, 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 I. <laughs> San Miguel is San Miguel, wherever, right? Yes, I know. Uh huh. Oh, Chuco but is the... Chuco in Cucuza. Right? <laughs> no translation, right? Yes, and I some know. People, for example, some people say El Salvador, right? But <laughs> you can say El Salvador or, or El Salvador, no problem, right? It's your option. Okay. But no okay. translation. It's, it's not necessary. <laughs> yes, I know. Maybe, Thank you. <laughs> maybe you can translate. Uh, Ciudad, right? O pueblo, city, town, eh, eh, Suchitoto town, por ejemplo. San Salvador, Siria. Ahí sí podemos eh, traducirlo, pero el nombre propio en sí, no. ¿Ok? Si el, el muchacho se llama Casildo, así es en inglés, en francés, <risa> Casildo. Right? Thank you. ¿Ok? Good. O si alguna vez ha visitado usted Cujucuyo, en Santa Ana, right? Hey, Cujucuyo, en Spanish, en inglés, right? O también eh, calzón abajo en Santa Ana también. Calzón abajo en El Salvador, calzón abajo en United States, right? Ok. Good. Now, these are the questions. Listen. Am I a student? Yes, I am or no? Este, lo... Sorry? Eh, solo, como, solo como aportar. Yes, come on, Ricardo. Por lo, men por lo menos yo tengo amigos de Estados Unidos, digamos que, para decir Ricardo, no lo dicen así, sino que como que lo suavizan al idioma inglés, ¿verdad? Como Ricardo. Ricardo. O... <risa> Eso es lo que pasa con, cuando, cuando hablan de otros nombres. No es que se traslada. No, no. Eh, inclusive hay una, un equiparamiento, ¿right? Eh, en los lo lenguajes, por ejemplo, um, Felipe en, en francés, Philip, ¿right? Eh, Guillermo. Es William, Juan, John, eh, eh, por ejemplo, Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, <ríe> etcétera, etcétera. Eh, hay como un equiparamiento, ¿verdad? Pero no es que, es que se traduzca el nombre, porque una vez ya tiene usted ese nombre, ya así es, ¿verdad? Ok. Good. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you. Now, and to finish this topic, we can also eh, use... Information question, right? Information question. In the information question, we say, give me a second here. What is your name? What is your name? Where is she? Who is he? Uh, how are they? How are they today? Example, ¿cómo están ellos, right? So, and in this case, uh, you use information question word, right? Que, donde, quien, como, etc., etc., right? With the verb to be. Now, we're going to continue with the test. And check it out here, right? Now, where am, where are, or don't answer, please. No me van a Where are you, where is you, or where am I? Sorry, where, where am you? <laughs> huh? So according to the verb to be, you answer here, right? Number two, it's a yes, no question. Are David and David, or is David? So remember David is what? Is a woman, a man, plural, singular? According to this, you're going to use the verb to be, right? Question word. Your math class is singular or is plural? Your math class. Huh? Number four, Maria and Brian. Look, in this case, we have two. Two, Maria and Brian. It's plural, right? So it's are, is, or am. Good. Now, 
conversation with the simple present. Ah, okay. Now I'm going to explain the simple present, right? With the simple present, is different from the verb to be. Listen, the verb to be is not the same the simple present. No es el mismo tema, right? The verb to be is passive. Passive, no actions. Like you say, usted es un estudiante o usted está en San Salvador, right? But you say, are you doing something? ¿Está haciendo algo? No, no actions. You are passive, right? But when I use the simple present, there is an action. Hay alguna acción cuando hablo del presente simple, right? Hay una excepción con los verbos estativos, steady verbs, pero en general siempre hay una acción. Hay una acción en el presente simple. Let's say the simple present, affirmative. I work in an office. In an office. I work in an office. They work in an office. Okay, notice that the word, with the verb to be, we have the subject. I am, he, she, and the verb to be, right? Here we have the subject and one verb in action. Listen, you don't say, I am work, or they are work. No, no, no. And no, incorrect. Only the subject, the action verb, and the complement, of course, right? But the difference here is that we say we work in an office. office. Uh, you work in an office. But listen to this. When I say third person singular, she is singular, only one. Any third person, tercera persona, you have to use an S. She works in an office. She works in an office. In an office. Okay, continue, continue. Then this is the difference between I, you, we, they, right? And he and she, and he too. But in this case, we're going to work with she and he. So we have an extra S in the affirmative, right? Now, in the negative, we're going to use the auxiliary do. And that's right. Do is for I, we, they, and you. And that's is for third person singular. She, he, and it, right? So these are the auxiliaries we use when we make negative sentences in simple present and questions. Negative and questions. The auxiliaries in simple present are not used in the affirmative. Los auxiliares del presente simple no los vamos a usar en las oraciones afirmativas. No los vamos a usar en las oraciones afirmativas. Don't use do and that's in affirmative. Only in negative and in question, right? Okay, now let's talk about this. Let's make this in negative. I work in an office and then I use the office. Oops. Sorry. ¿Qué me pasó aquí? Excuse me. Ya no puedo entrar acá, okay? Vamos a hacer otro. Excuse me. Okay. Negative, right? So he said, I do not work in an office. So I'm using the auxiliary do in negative, right? Why? Because I use the word not. 
I can also make contractions and say, I don't work in an office. You do not work in an office. Okay. And again, we can make contractions. And we say, Don't work. You don't work in an office, right? Okay. Etc. 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 They we, but when we use third person singular, we say she does not work in an office. Is that correct? Yes or no? Is that correct? Esa oración. Oops. Ya me salí. No, no, no. No. No, right? Pero me salí del cuadro. No. Sorry. Excuse me. No, no está correcta, ¿verdad? Pero... Sorry. Give me a second. No se me entra otra vez. Ok. Let me see. No, right? Vamos a tener que hacer otro. <laughs> I'm sorry. Vamos a corregirla aquí. She does not work in an office, right? In an office. Okay. Y borremos esto. Okay. She does not work in an office. Why? Because we are using the auxiliary, right? We are using the auxiliary in the negative. And when we use the auxiliary, we don't have the S in the verb. Okay, okay, good. Now, let's go to the question, right? Remember I say, I use the auxiliary do and does in Excuse questions me. and in negative, in two contexts. In two contexts. Excuse me, teacher. Yes. Can question. you repeat? Okay, good. Listen. In the verb to be, we are talking about passive, and we have affirmative, negative, and question, right? In the simple present, we have action, action, right? When I say work, action. When I say run, exercise, dance, dance, right? Or when I say eat, drink, so I indicate action, right? So in affirmative sentences, in simple present, I use the subject, right? The subject, subject plus verb plus complement, right? I work in an office, okay? In affirmative, I don't use the auxiliary, right? And what is the auxiliary? The auxiliary in this case is do and does, right? So we use do and does only in negative and in questions. Only in negative and questions. For example, they do not uh, speak French. Vamos a cambiarlo. They do not speak French, right? Or in contraction. They don't speak French, right? Ne parler le français, okay? They don't speak French. So we use, in this case, in negative, we use the auxiliary, right? In third person singular, he does not speak French. Okay? The, here, we don't use do, but we use that, right? And we can also make contraction here. That, right? Okay. 
And in this case, you say teacher, pero usted dijo que el, a los verbos en presente simple se le graba una S cuando es he y cuando es she. Okay, yes, but this is the exception because we are talking about negative sentences. And then in this case, we use das. Ya, como ya usamos das, ya no es necesario agregarle la S acá en el verbo. ¿eh? Ya no. It's not necessary. Not necessary, okay? Good. This is in the case of the negative, okay? Okay, good. Now we're going to go to the questions. Uh, Larissa, any question? Okay. Vamos bien hasta ahí, Larissa? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, good. Now we go to the to the question, right? Yes. No question. Así como con el verbo to be teníamos afirmative, negative, and yes, no question in the simple present too. Presente simple también. The only difference is that here we don't say are, ah, um, is, no. We say do and that. Do and that, right? So I say, do you, do you play football? And say, yes, I do. Or, no. I don't. Okay. Yes, I do or no, I don't. Does he go to the beach, for example? Yes, he does. Or no, he doesn't, right? No, he doesn't, right? Okay. So, yes, no question. We also use the auxiliary, do and does. And then you say, pero, ¿y cómo se traduce ese do y ese does, right? No translation. No translation. No se traduce. Because this is exclusive for English, no Spanish. No Spanish, right? Nosotros no necesitamos auxiliares porque en español lo que usamos es la conjugación del verbo. We say, eh, ¿Cómo comeré en el futuro? Comí en el pasado. But it's not necessary to use do, does, did, will, be going to. No, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. Right? In Spanish. But in English, yes. But in English, sí es necesario. So in this case, do and does are absolutely necessary for questions in negative. Right? Okay. And also we have, yes, no question. Information question, sorry. And say, where do you work? Where do you work? When does he eat? Okay, so we have the auxiliary do and does, right? The subject and the verb. And the question word. Además, le agregamos en las preguntas de información. Right? Le agregamos el question word. Information question. Information question. Ok. Eh, además de usar el, el verbo, el auxiliar tú en das, usamos preguntas de cómo, dónde, cuándo, por qué, etcétera, etcétera. Right? And then in, in this case, listen. Where do you, where do you work? Yes, I do. Is that correct, class? Is that correct? No, right? Because it's not a yes, no question. No es una pregunta de sí y no. Es una pregunta específica de cierta información. Where? Say, where, right? ¿Dónde trabajas? I work in... Oh, wait a minute. I work in, in a hospital. Bueno, ahorita no es muy bueno decir que trabajo en un hospital. <laughs> yes. Okay, and I work in a hospital. So it's a specific information. 
where when does he eat he eats aquí si ya recupera la s el verbo eats in in his house right okay good any question Verb to be simple present right now let's continue with the test let's continue with the test Teacher, I have a question. Yes. Tell me, tell me, please tell me. In the primera oración, words, porque no se le agregó S. Okay, then let me see. Será que yo me equivoqué? Déjeme ver. Let me see. Where do you work? I work. Eh, en la work. respuesta. En la respuesta. I, I work. work in the ah, okay, hospital. because it's. Because it's, it's uh, I. Ah, es primera persona. Ah, okay. uh -huh, yes. Only with okay. he and she. Solo vamos a agregarlo con he. Yes, sí. She and he, right? Solamente con sí, he. Sí, en los sí. Otros, sí, sí, I understand. Good. Okay. I remember, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Now let's continue. Now, we were talking about the verb to be. Now, simple present. Simple present. Listen. No me voy a confundir el verbo to be al principio con el presente simple en la segunda parte, ¿ok? Where, what, where does, or where do? I don't know, okay. But don't say, where is you, or where are you? No, no, where are you work? <laughs> where are you work? No, 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 okay. You use simple present, do and that, right? Number two, what does, or what do he do? I don't know, but where does she? And she goes to the University of Colorado, is that right? Mm -hmm. She goes, she goes. I don't know, you tell me, right? Good, any extra question? Preguntas extras sobre el letra C? Okay, so let's continue, right? Here we have the possessive. Possessive and the object pronoun, right? Part one, possessive. Possessive adjective. Part two of the pronoun. How does it work? How does it work? Listen, please. Okay. We have subject pronoun. We have possessive adjectives, possessive adjectives, and object pronouns. Okay? Now, for the subject pronoun, we have I, my and me for you i have your and the object pronoun is you right for he We have his, and for the object pronoun, him. For she, we have for the possessive, her, and for the other object pronoun, her too. The same, right? For it, we have its, the possessive. And eat the other pronoun, right? For we, we have our, our, and us. For they, we have their, 
and the object pronoun is them. Now, what is the difference? Pay attention, please, pay attention. The difference is that the subject pronoun takes the position of the subject. Toma la posición del sujeto, el que realiza la acción, el que hace la acción, okay? For example, I say, I work in an office. What is the subject? I, you work in an office. What is the subject? You, you, right? They, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? Good, but in the possessive adjectives, I use the possessive adjective to show that something is my possession, para decir que algo es mío, right? For example, my, my, my cell phone, right? My cell phone. So I say, my cell phone, your cell phone, his cell phone, el celular de él, right? Her cell phone, celular de ella, okay, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, I'm using, listen, listen, pay attention. With the possessive adjective, I'm using the possessive adjective and a noun, okay? Y la posición del possessive adjective no es la posición del sujeto, no. Es un adjetivo. Siempre va a ir antes de un nombre. Antes de un nombre. For example, pen, right? I say, eh, your pen. Primero está el possessive adjective, your, y después está el nombre. Pen, in this case, right? Pen, pen, okay? So, the possessive adjective is like this. Possessive adjective and noun. Siempre va a ir acompañado de un nombre. Cualquier nombre. Una casa, un, un carro, un lapicero, etc. Ok, then. Finally, the object pronoun. Los pronombres objetivos o los pronombres eh, de object pronoun son los que reciben la acción. Si el sujeto es el que hace la acción, el objeto es el que recibe la acción. The subject makes the action. And the object receives the action. Okay? So I can say, for example, I give the telephone to you. I give the mouse. I give the mouse to her. Yo le doy el mouse a ella. Okay? Uh, hasta hay una canción de rap que dice... Maybe you can give it to me. I give it to you. ¿Ok? Quiere decir que I es el sujeto, give es la acción, y you es el objeto. ¿Ah? Yo le doy a él, yo le doy a ella, yo le doy a ellos, right? Etc, etc. So, subject pronouns is the one that makes the action. El que hace la acción. And the object is the one that receives the action. ¿Ok? Good. Y el possessive adjective solo está para describir una posesión y siempre va a ir acompañado de un nombre. Simple like that, right? Good. Any question? Any question? Teacher. Yes, tell me. Tell this, me please. this class is, um, um, how do you say it in, in English? I don't know, but it's, um, uh, queda grabada. Yes, esta clase la van a, la van a poner, poder ver el día de mañana en YouTube. Eh, ¿Y cómo entiendo, se llama? entiendo que ustedes le han explicado cómo accesar, tienen un link para accesar al canal de, de la, la oficina, ¿verdad? De inglés corporativo. Oh. Entonces, esto lo van a poder ver ustedes en YouTube. ¿Sí? Pueden repasarla, no hay problema. <risa> ¿Okay? ¿Ok? Inclusive sí. cuando hay un tema que les cueste y lo, lo, lo hago en una PowerPoint, se las puedo mandar al grupo, no hay problema, ¿verdad? Para que ustedes repasen. Good. Any question? Now, Thank you. you're welcome. Now let's continue with the test, right? So in this case is, nice to meet you, Rich. And what, what's his, their, or your? ¿Cuál es el posesivo? Last name again. Aquí está hablando de Rich. Nice to meet you, Rich. And what's his, their, or your? Her last name is Parker. My last name is Parker. Or oh, its last name is Parker. It's nice to meet you too. This is, okay? This is my new friend, Elizabeth. Everyone calls. Estamos hablando de Elizabeth. Calls. Aquí estamos hablando de, 
the object pronoun, right? Call me, call them, or call her. Beth. Next one. Hi, Beth. We're the Johnsons. Somos los Johnsons, nosotros, right? And then first name are Frank and Judy, right? Está hablando de nosotros los Johnson. So, your, his, or our. This is about the possessive, right? Possessive. Possessive. Now, the object pronoun. I like him, I like her, or I like you a lot. ¿Qué es Johnny Depp? ¿Es un objeto? ¿Es un hombre? ¿Es una mujer? ¿Son varias personas? ¿Mm? So, him, it, or you. Continue. Number two. Tengo una pregunta por acá. Eh, todas las clases de la clase 1 a la clase 8 les, les comento está, bueno, de la 1 a la 7 porque esta todavía no la han subido de la 1 a la 7 están en YouTube ahí le, le, si tienen alguna duda ya ven, llamen a los teléfonos que estén en el grupo de WhatsApp eh, pueden contactar con, con Jonathan con Oscar o el número directo en la oficina que les le dieron la vez pasada en el grupo de WhatsApp verdad y si no saben cómo hacerlo, ellos les van a dar el link para accesar a, al canal de YouTube de la oficina y ahí están todos los videos, del 1 al 7. Y este va a estar mañana. Okay. Good, ahí pueden practicar. Music videos are very interesting. Do you like videos? Plural, right? Plural, videos. ¿Qué es? ¿Un él? ¿Un ellos? ¿Un nosotros? ¿Ok? Do you like her? Do you like them? ¿O do you like us? My favorite TV program is Survivor. Recuerden este programa es Survivor. So, what is TV program? Is singular? Is plural? Es un él, es un ella, es un ellos. Mm? Okay, good. Now, let's go to the next part. Complete the sentences. Complete the sentence. Okay, fill in the, in the, with the, Correct fine expression, right? Uh, de esto tengo el PowerPoint eh, número 5. Lo vamos a subir acá. Let me see. Number 5 here, right? Okay, and I explain this part. I will explain to you, right? Anyway, I want to explain. Okay. Uh, good. When do you use in? We use in in, uh, in parts of the day, month, and year. Partes del día, años y meses. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, in September, in 20, 2020, right? Este PowerPoint también está en el grupo de WhatsApp, si quieren practicar, right? On. We use the preposition on with days, portions of the week, and dates. On Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, etc., etc., right? On weekdays, on weekends. También lo usamos para decir fechas. On September 28th, on the 28th. At, we use the preposition at with specific time. At 3 o'clock, at 3.30, at 3.40, at 4.45, etc., etc., right? At 9 p.m. And we use that for noon, night, and midnight. At noon, at night, at midnight, right? Okay. So let me see this part. So I sleep what? In, on, or at? In, on, or at? John gets home late at night, in night, or on night. They have lunch in Saturdays, on Saturday, or at Saturday. Etc., etc., etc. Okay? Now, part number two, the demonstratives. For the demonstratives, we're going to, just give me a second, we're going to use another presentation. The power presentation number two, number six, sorry. Esta también está en el, el grupo de, de WhatsApp, right? Okay. 
Okay, these are the demonstrative, right? The demonstratives are this, that, though, these, and those, right? This, that, these, and those. This is for singular, that is for singular. This is for close, near, right? When algo está cerca, yes, singular, this. This car, this pencil, right? That. It's for singular, solo uno, right? But if when it's far, cuando está lejos, that, that, okay? Then, when it's plural and it's close, these, right? These. For example, these pens, right? These pens. Estos lapiceros, these pens, right? It's plural and it's close to me. Está cerca de mí. Those. When it's plural and it's far. Cuando está lejos, Y es plural, those, esos, okay, esos, right? So that is the demonstrative. Also, we have the use of one and ones. El one y el one son pronombres que sustituyen a un nombre, okay? And one is for singular and ones is for plural, right? With this information, we go to the test and say, how much is? These, that, these, z, or those, watch. ¿Qué es esto? ¿Es un watch? ¿Es un singular? ¿Es un plural? ¿Está, está lejos o está cerca? Se dice que no puede hallar el, el, el precio, ¿no? No sé si está cerca o está lejos. Y usted puede ver el precio si está lejos. <laughs> I don't know, right? You take the decision. Look at purple jeans. Jeans. Plural, right? Okay, so you use this, that, or what? Now, I like this, that, those. Excuse me, I like this, that, those, etc. Et can I see it, please? ¿Pudiera verla? Le pregunto al clerk. Okay, ¿qué será? ¿Que la tiene la, la gorra ahí en su mano o que tiene que pasarse la, de lejos el, el clerk? Huh? I don't know. You take the decision, right? She likes these, that, or those glasses, right? Okay, any question? Good, now let's finish with reading. Reading. Listen to me. Hi, Ernesto. Sorry, I will copy this here. Okay. Hi, Ernesto. In your email message, you ask me, what do I do every day? En tu mensaje que me mandaste, me preguntaba qué es lo que yo hago todos los días. Well, I am a student in the University of Michigan. I really like my classes. Soy estudiante de la Universidad de Michigan. I study computer science in Chinese. Estudia ciencias de la computación en Chinese. Ni hao, ni hao, okay, Chinese. I go to school around 8 in the morning on weekdays, right? In the morning on weekends, okay, on weekdays, sorry. Around noon, I have lunch with some classmates. Tengo almuerzo con algunos compañeros, right? On Mondays and Fridays, I work out in the gym. I will ejercicio. Work out means hacer ejercicio. Trabajar en el gym, right? Hacer ejercicio. Before my classes. And in the... In the late afternoon on Tuesday and Thursday, my friend Daniel and I have part-time jobs. In las tardes, pues tenemos trabajo de medio tiempo. We work in the school cafeteria. Ahí en la cafetería de la escuela están los, los chicos, ¿verdad? And I study in the library every weeknight. Okay? Todas las noches se va a estudiar a la biblioteca. Until about 2 a.m. Hasta las 2 de la madrugada está el pobre ahí estudiando. I'm a full student and I don't have time to watch TV. No me queda tiempo ni para ver ni el celular ni la tele, ¿verdad? And what do you do? Send me another email, please. ¿Qué es lo que haces tú, verdad? So according to this, you're going to say, Ernesto's, Ernesto's, or is Chris's classmate, new friend, or best friend? Okay. Por aquí pueden ver en la lectura que es Ernesto de Chris. Chris is a 
part-time teacher, full-time student o TV announcer. ¿Qué es? ¿Es un profesor de medio tiempo, un estudiante de tiempo completo o un anunciador de la televisión? Daniel. Daniel works in the library. Daniel exercises every day. O Daniel is Chris's friend. ¿Quién es Daniel? And on Tuesday and Thursday, Chris, ¿qué hace Chris? Rise to Ernesto, works with Daniel, o Daphne study at the library. ¿Qué es lo que hace los martes y los jueves, Chris? Okay. Aquí está toda una lectura. Now, class, any question? Any question? Remember I have a this? question. Yes, tell me, tell me. Ya sabes. Mm. Um, este, con respecto a la palabra que aparece ahí, que es work out. Ah, work out. Es que usted dijo que era, ajá, que es hacer ejercicio. Es... Y, pero la palabra también, por ejemplo, si yo digo, did you get any exercise yesterday? Este, ¿cómo sé cu cuándo utilizar exercise y work out? Work out. Bueno, work out es como una rutina de trabajo, un gym, right? Lo que pasa que en inglés hay lo que se llama phrasal verbs, que es un verbo más, generalmente es una preposición, ¿verdad? Una particle se llama en inglés, una partícula, a particle. The verb and a particle. En este caso, la partícula o la preposición, en este caso, ¿verdad? También es out. Entonces, work out. Si yo digo, I work at the gym, quiere decir que yo, yo soy el que ejercito a los demás y a mí me pagan por eso, porque yo ahí trabajo. I work at the gym. Pero si yo le agrego la, la, la partícula out, cambio el significado del verbo y digo, I work out. Yo, yo me ejercito. Yo um, um, tra me trabajo mi cuerpo, ¿no? Okay. Ah, entonces, por eso viene la palabra ahí. También tenemos otros como turn on, encender, y turn off. Turn quiere decir cambio, un cambio. ¿Sí? Yo digo, I turn o, o giro también, un giro. I turn, digo, lo cruzo. ¿no? Pero si digo turn on, ya cambio el significado, digo encender algo. Turn off. Apagar algo. Turn up. Darle volumen a algo. ¿eh? Turn down. Bajarle el volumen. ¿eh? Entonces eso es lo que se llama phrasal verbs. Workout es un ejemplo de un phrasal verb. Pero eso significa ejercitarse. Ahora, cuando usted dice hacer ejercicio, no es necesario en un gym. Entonces, cuando usted va a una cancha a correr, por ejemplo, ¿verdad? O tirarse, entonces es exercise. O hace aeróbico en su casa, por ejemplo, es exercise. No, 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 es, no es que va al gym, no, no es un workout, ¿sí? El workout se usa más que todo para cuando usted usa artefactos para hacer ejercicio, ¿sí? Y ejercicio es okay. en general eh, mover el cuerpo. <risas> Inclusive cuando baila, usted está ejercitando. <risas> ¿Ok? Ok, thanks. You're welcome. Eh, ay, también me preguntaba de... ¿Cuál era la otra pregunta? Yo sabía... Solo eso era, ¿verdad? Yes, sí. Okay, only, good. Only that. No, thank you. Now, no more questions. Ok, la última. Recuérdense que este examen se supone que ya tenía que estar terminado para ahora, ¿verdad? Así es que pueden trabajar, si les gusta trabajar de noche, ¿verdad? Después de la clase. Si no, mañana, por favor, ¿verdad? Pero más tardar, así como el último que ya, la última oportunidad, el fin de semana, ¿ok? El fin de semana, porque ya tenemos que tener terminada la sección 1, 2 y 3, y este examen, ¿ok? Así que, por favorcito, look at the teacher, please, complete the test, complete section 1, okay, complete section 2. Bye bye. Have a good night. God bless you. Bye bye, teacher. Bye bye. Good night, teacher. Good night. Bye, good teacher. Night. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye.